Bobby Kotick, CEO of Activision Blizzard, just cannot help being the absolute worst. It was only two years ago that the DFEH, California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing, sued Activision Blizzard over widespread sexism, harassment, and a pervasive frat boy culture. In response, Activision Blizzard retaliated with this initial statement, where they said that the DFEH included distorted and in many cases false descriptions of Blizzard's past. They rushed to file an inaccurate complaint, were sickened by the reprehensible conduct of the DFEH to draft into the complaint the tragic passing of an employee who took their own life, which we'll get to. Activision somehow thought that an employee being harassed so much that they just couldn't take it anymore was somehow not relevant to this situation. They called the DFEH's investigation an irresponsible behavior. The picture the DFEH paints is not the blizzard workplace of today. It is a shame that the DFEH did not want to engage with us on what they thought they were seeing in their investigation. Now, this is a statement that was so poorly received, caused such protests and riots among employees in the gaming community alike that very quickly the tone changed when Bobby Kotick sent the following letter to Activision Blizzard employees and he said, just a lot of empty words and platitudes and gaslighting. I so appreciate your courage. Every voice matters. Our initial response to the issues we faced together and to your concerns were, quite frankly, tone deaf. I am sorry that we did not provide the right empathy and understanding. The leadership team has heard you loud and clear. We're taking swift action to be the compassionate, caring company you came to work for. I've asked the law firm uh, Wilmer Hale to conduct a review, which is a convenient conflict of interest for Activision, given that Wilmer Hale has worked with Activision in the past and they have a track record of being pro-corporation. Bobby Kotick spouted BS like your outreach will be kept confidential. Of course, no retaliation will be tolerated. And then finally, your well-being remains my top priority. You have my unwavering commitment that we will improve our company together. We knew from the very beginning that that statement was full of BS, that Bobby Kotick was just saying what he needed to say to stave off the immense negative PR and backlash. And that became especially apparent earlier this month when Activision Blizzard's tone changed again, when Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick denied a culture of harassment and blamed unions for company problems. Because, you know... Things are safe in Bossing Say. There is no war in Bossing Say. The Verges article on Bobby Kotick's attitude reversal covers some of the allegations that the DFEH levied against the company. Cube crawls where male employees would get drunk and walk around the workplace objecting female employees to inappropriate behavior. Male employees would pawn off responsibilities to their female co-workers. Women of color were passed up for opportunities given to less tenured workers. A senior World of Warcraft developer was so infamous for his harassment of women that his office was nicknamed the Cosby Suite. And there are egregious specific incidents instances like a woman who was demoted for allegedly reporting her harasser, a nursing mother who had her breast milk stolen from company refrigerators, and one employee's harassment led to their death. This is an employee who took her own life after harasser spread throughout the company an exposed photo of her. And thus far, the consequences for Activision Blizzard and executives like Bobby Kotick have been minimal. They've only had to pay a couple dozen million dollars, a drop in the bucket for a company like Activision Blizzard. Attorney Lisa Bloom, known for litigating high-profile harassment cases and counsel for a Blizzard employee, aptly called this settlement woefully inadequate. We're not talking about questionable allegations from a handful of employees. We're talking about widespread reports from hundreds of employees when so many former and current employees are saying the same thing about the work culture of harassment, misconduct, abuse, and discrimination that they faced there tends to be validity. It is damn near undeniable that there was a toxic culture at Activision Blizzard, which Bobby Kotick is now once again denying after apologizing for the once tone-deaf statement that they made way back when and said that he would strive to make things better, that employees' well-being was his top priority. Now that things have simmered down, Bobby Kotick feels safe to drop his mask and show his true nature. So this right here is an article by Variety. They got in touch with Bobby Kotick and asked them some questions about all the allegations. When Variety brought up to Bobby Kotick that women were subjected to constant harassment, including groping, comments, and advances, and that the company's executives and human resources personnel knew of the harassment and failed to take reasonable steps to prevent the unlawful conduct and instead retaliated against women who complained and defended senior developers who were in a high enough position of power where consequences were meaningless for them, and then beyond that fostered a sexist culture and paid women less than men and assigned women to lower-level jobs than men.
men. When all of that was brought up in front of Bobby Kotick, here is how Bobby responded. The executive, Bobby, says he has been both humbled and outraged by what he considers malicious distortions about the company that he has taken to great heights over 32 years. Ah, that he has taken to great heights. Not the employees whose talent has allowed Activision Blizzard to ship video game products that have gone on to become wildly successful. In Bobby Kotick's eyes, it was all him. This goes to highlight how lowly he thinks of his employees and the team that makes the company's success possible. Oh, we're just getting started. It gets much worse, especially this bit right here where he makes no apologies for Activision or its culture. He says that the company is preparing to release a slew of data from the EOC investigation that he hopes will combat the perception that Activision was run as a frat house. Remember when he said two years ago that our initial responses to the issues we faced together and to your concerns were tone deaf and that I am sorry that we did not provide the right empathy and understanding? Guess what? He takes it back. This is the kind of two-faced snake Bobby Kotick is. It was apparent from the get-go when we saw that apology statement that he didn't mean it, but it's like he's not afraid to hide it anymore. He's making it pretty blatant that he does not feel for the employees at all. And then check out the justification that Bobby Kotick provides for why a few employees getting harassed is not that big a deal. For a company with 17,000 employees worldwide, Kotick asserts Activision has had a relatively low level of harassment and assault complaints. In his point of view, as long as the percentage of people getting harassed at the company in comparison to the total number of employees is low, then it's okay. That's a price worth paying. The small percentage of people who are getting harassed, they're negligible, is essentially what he's saying here. A small percentage of 17,000 employees is still a lot of people. Nobody with any degree of empathy would find even a single employee getting harassed to the degree that has been reported acceptable. But for Bobby Kotick, a few cases of harassment it's an acceptable loss. From there, Bobby Kotick insists that he'll release a transparency report, transparency coming out of the mouth of the snake, that will provide exculpatory data from outside entities. He acknowledges that the stain left by the sweeping allegations will be hard to combat with pie charts and statistical tables. Yeah, because your charts and tables are far less important than the testimonials from hundreds to thousands of employees within your company who have reported that the allegations are true. When so many people are saying the same thing about having experienced the reported harassment or have witnessed somebody experience the reported harassment, there's simply no sweeping that under the rug. That harassment happened. The toxic work culture is real. And Bobby Kotick can't erase that from history with frickin' pie charts and statistical tables. Kotick asserted in this interview, we have had every possible form of investigation done. Ah yes, Activision Blizzard conducting investigations on themselves are hiring just the right party to conduct an ideal investigation for Activision. But the ones that matter from impartial third-party entities like the DFH, those investigations, they don't count. Those don't matter. They're reporting BS. Bobby Kotick insists that after having every possible form of investigation done, we did not have a systemic issue with harassment ever. We didn't have any of what were mischaracterizations in the media. There are literally photos out there of Activision Blizzard senior developers and employees posing with a picture of Bill Cosby in a room known as the Cosby Suite where the senior developers would try to goad female fans from BlizzCon and whatnot to try to do inappropriate things with them. It's not just word of mouth from Blizzard employees. There's like hard evidence out there that harassment took place. So for Bobby Kotick to come out here and say that this company has been clean since the very beginning, that there's never been any systemic issue with harassment ever? I mean, the audacity of this piece of shit. This is all very much gaslighting and trying to discredit the media. Oh no, but it keeps getting worse. After saying that there was never any harassment at the company, he says that what we did have was a very aggressive labor movement working hard to try and destabilize the company. Not only did he recant his previous fake apology, now he's throwing his employees under the bus by saying that our employees are ruining our company. Not my poor leadership, it's the employee's fault. Their aggressive labor movement is made to blame, says Bobby Kotick, trying to discredit employees wanting to unionize and work under better conditions, because that 
is unacceptable for Bobby Kotick, for employees to want better standards. During the interview, Kotick apparently placed the blame for most of Activision's image problems on what he calls outside forces and labor activity around the company. In Bobby Kotick's view, Activision Blizzard's negative image has nothing to do with Bobby's actions and inactions. It's just the employees who created this grand conspiracy to try to stain the company's image like... What is this guy smoking? The Communications Workers of America and Activision employees have filed a stream of complaints against the company with the National Labor Relations Board. Kotick believes labor organizers are influencing the state and federal investigations into harassment and gender discrimination claims, as well as the Activision employee walkouts that have been staged periodically since 2021. Like, holy shit, talk about trying to twist and falsify the current narrative. If Bobby Kotick thinks that this interview is going to save him, if this is going to help convince people that he's not just pure evil <laughs> i mean come on man this guy's freaking delusional this is willful delusion a desperate attempt to try to discredit all the different elements that have painted an accurate picture of who bobby kotick is as a person and what kind of work culture he has let fester and then later in the interview he straight up says that he regrets releasing that apology statement he regrets not doubling down on that initial statement where he tried to discredit the DFEH and accuse them of distorting the facts, painting an inaccurate picture of Activision Blizzard as a company. According to Variety's article, Bobby Kotick said that he believes his biggest mistake was failing to forcefully defend the company and his legacy to the journal and in his public statements. He said, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if any of what you read and in the inflammatory narrative was truthful. No board of directors in a non-controlled company is going to allow the CEO of an enterprise to stay running the enterprise price if those things were truthful. How stupid does he think we are? The board of directors won't let a CEO stay if that CEO becomes a liability. In the case of Bobby Kotick, because Activision Blizzard is bringing in a bunch of money under his leadership, they're letting his shenanigans fly. That's what's going on here. The board of directors is not beholden to a moral compass. They're beholden to what's good for the corporation. And if the negative PR surrounding Bobby Kotick had gotten bad enough that it started to affect Activision Blizzard's financial standing negatively, like impactfully enough then they would have dismissed him. But because ultimately the backlash hasn't had as big of an impact, they're letting Bobby Kotick stay. Board of directors will let CEOs and executives get away with all kinds of morally and legally questionable shenanigans. They'll let them get away with murder so long as the blowback isn't all that bad. The board of directors isn't there to protect employees. They're there to protect the company. And in turn, they will protect the CEO who's been making the company a lot of money. Like, is this the best bullshit you can come up with, Bobby Kotick? And I just love that he says, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you and doing an interview if I was guilty of something. Because never in the history of humanity has a guilty person done a press tour to do damage control. Kotick also tries to garner some sympathy by saying that as he has become perceived as a villain, the hatred has turned into a lot of anti-Semitism. When you look at images of me are on the internet, when you look at images of me that are on the internet, there are these anti-Semitic undertones. My kids have gotten death threats. Now, anti-Semitism and death threats and all these things, that stuff I do not agree with. I don't think fighting evil by stooping to evil is the way to go. So if this stuff did indeed happen, I certainly don't condone or accept or justify that shit. But Bobby Kotick, as an employer and leader, being vilified for his awful actions and his negligent inactions, that I'm all for. Another distasteful statement that Bobby Kotick made during this interview was presenting this notion of video games creating content on its own in real time. There is some form of that already in video games. It's procedural generation, but Bobby Kotick seems to want to take that to a whole new level to a point where he just won't have to need developers as much. That will be exquisite, he says. And then one last thing that Bobby Kotick wanted to make crystal clear in this interview, and this is the most hilarious statement of them all, is that this son of a teacher is not anti-union. The CEO who's taken extreme union-busting measures is coming out here to say, I promise you, I'm not anti-union. Imagine if the devil himself came to you and said, I promise you, I'm Jesus Christ. Kotick insists that I am not like other CEOs that are anti-union. He's, he's a special CEO, you guys. He's one of the good ones. I'm the only Fortune 500 CEO who's a member of a union. If we have employees who want a union to represent them, and they believe that the union is going to be able to provide them with opportunities and enhancements to their work experience, I'm all for it. Bobby Kotick bullshit. I have a mother who was a teacher. Okay, irrelevant. I have no aversion to a union. What I do have an aversion to is a union that doesn't play 
by the rules. And by the rules, what he's really trying to say is, by my rules. The audacity of Bobby Kotick to bring up playing by the rules, coming from a man who made death threats to former assistants and mistreated women himself, coming from a man who withheld information from Activision's board about the allegations of abuse, misconduct, discrimination, and harassment at the company. Coming from the man who runs a company that does not pay taxes, and on top of that receives massive tax credits totaling in the hundreds of millions of dollars. This is the man who wants to get on his high horse and wag the finger to employees about playing by the rules. Oh, and guess what? Employees are playing by the rules. They're doing nothing illegal. They're striking, they're protesting, they're doing everything in their power through legal means to disrupt the operations of an employer who doesn't give a shit about them so that they can have a negotiating power at the table, which is reasonable because we're talking about the livelihoods of thousands of employees, something that Bobby Kotick doesn't have perspective about because he's just enjoying his multi-million dollar riches. And just to further highlight what a bold-faced lie this is that unlike other CEOs who are anti-union, I'm not, there are plenty of articles and reports out there discussing Activision and reporting on Activision's union-busting shenanigans and tricks. Just to highlight how petty Activision executives can be, here's a former employee who wrote jokes lampooning generic corporate greed for a venture company, Loot Goblin, varying character, but then leadership, Activision leadership, walked face first into the joke after string lock while my focus was getting the patch done. Because of their embarrassment, I'm no longer at Blizzard. This man was fired because he made a joke about corporate greed in World of Warcraft, a joke made in association with a greedy goblin that is also unfortunately a reflection of real life. Corporate greed does absolutely exist, and Activision Blizzard is a major exhibit of it. This former Blizzard employee continued, funny how it was good enough for marketing and promoting the game before, during, and after I was separated. They took it down after I pointed out the hypocrisy. No consideration or trust extended to at least ask me what my intentions were for the character. Was it targeted at anyone? Nope. No polite request to let me handle it and hot fix some lines because of circumstances I would have willingly and understandably helped. Additionally, I was in the camp of being excited for RTO because of how it benefited my personal working style and was excited to see my colleagues again. RTO meaning return to office from remote. I also still champion for folks to be offered the work style they required, work from home, hybrid, many threads, emails as proof. Nine years of service at the company, up in smoke without question because someone looked at an innocuous joke and saw a reflection. No company or executive would fire someone over something so innocuous Unless they were that insecure, Eric continues, they made sure to hustle and get me out before the end of the month in full knowledge that benefits would expire the next day. And then after expressing gratitude towards his friends and colleagues at Blizzard, he emphasized that if you're going to be sour towards a company, don't aim it at the developers who are working hard to two face snakes like Bobby Kotick, who will one day say your well-being remains my priority, and then turn around the next day and say that aggressive labor movements on the part of employees are to blame for the destabilization of the company. When the reality is, Bobby Kotick, in the words of of Obi-Wan Kenobi. You have done that yourself. Or at least that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the statements that Bobby Kotick made to New Salad Variety during their interview. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.